Good afternoon, everyone. Tom Stewart here with Cleaning Business Today. I got my uh, partner, Liz Trotter. Hello, Liz. Hola. And we got our special guest, Matt Ricketts, today with Better Life Maids out of St. Louis. Hey, Matt, how are you? Hey, good. Glad to be here. Hey, um, we did one of these a couple of days ago with Matt, and we uh, started talking about various ways that you could put together their training programs. And, and in previous uh, Facebook Live, Matt shared with us some... Uh, some do-it-yourself uh, hacks on on how to edit film on a, or, or using some 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 pretty uh, low-budget software and, and 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 some 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 pretty easy tricks that that a lot of people found useful. So um, yesterday, or I guess two days ago, uh, Matt was with us, and we were talking about do-it-yourself uh, training uh, material modules using um, PowerPoint and narrating PowerPoints, and Matt's going to. Uh, show us uh, some of the finer points and, and tricks of, of doing that today. Um, anything uh, happen in the world in the last 24 hours in terms of, uh, you know, COVID-19 or SBA funds or anything else uh, affecting our world? Uh, I haven't looked at the stock market today, but there was, you know, that you were mentioning it before the, how do you say the drug, uh, the, Gil the Gilead? It's a, it's a, a Gilead drug. Then they were testing it and it's kind of gone up and down. There were some initial studies that showed that it was effective uh, as a, what they call a therapeutic. If you contract uh, COVID-19 and they give this to you, if you're in the hospital, the likelihood of you getting out of the hospital sooner was better. Or, and then they came out with some numbers after that, when, when they initially said it was it was working and helpful and what they call efficacious, their stock went up and everybody got excited. And then they said, eh, we don't think it really works because they did a study with really sick people and they were dying regardless. So the stock dropped, not only their stock, but all stock and everybody. That was the China the China study that happened earlier that that kind of dropped the tanked the the tanked it again because they, they were using um, people that were already on ventilators basically uh, is when they were when they were administrating the drug basically. So they were showing the the Chicago study was showing that early intervention um, shortened hospital stays substantially. Um, I don't have the exact number, but I was thinking it's it shortened hospital stays as much as eight days. The average stay is twelve days or over, um, and and they were able to get it down to below four days as the yeah, average. The study, the study they. And they haven't formally announced it yet, but Fauci was talking about it. And I believe this is like the double blind study, which, you know, they have placebos, which really makes it, you know, a lot more uh, valid. And it significantly reduced the hospital stays for the people that they gave it to. And everybody's all excited. So yeah. I think justifiably so. I think I think therapeutics are going to be the first step. There was also some good news out of Oxford uh, this week. They had a... Um, they have a drug that's actually going to uh, live uh, human trials already for a um, uh, for a coronavirus vaccine that actually looks very promising. And the reason they were able to get it so soon was is they'd already they, the for a different form of coronavirus they'd already shown efficacy. So coronavirus just means a it's a wide variety of of disease. The common cold is a form of coronavirus. Right. Yeah. So we're we're, we're using this word coronavirus like it's like this one thing, but it's. It's a it's an entire spectrum of disease, and so um, Oxford, this group out of Oxford, um, had a had a vaccine that already had been shown to be safe in humans, uh, the delivery method. So they were able to basically package it, repackage it with this new viral. Um, I don't know what I don't. I'm not a scientist. I don't want to get too technical. <laughs> but it's not been good, Matt. Go with it. We're we're we're. But, we're but, it. but they've already basically greenlighted it to human studies because they've proved that they've proved that the delivery method was already safe previously. So this is probably something that could have a vaccine if if it works as early as September instead of talking about next year. So that's very promising. I'm man. I'm really I'm a really firm believer in um, human ingenuity and the fact that like. When, you know, when push comes to shove, this is the stuff that like has always made America great. Like, you know, we, 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 you know, not to get political on Trump's make America great again, but America's always been great. America's always been good at solving big, nasty, overwhelming problems. That's what we're good at. And, you know, this is going to be a challenge for the long term. I'm not saying this is going to go away tomorrow. There's going to be long term effects of this. But, man, I have a lot of faith in um, in our society to solve problems like this. So 
Um, that I'll leave it at that. We can kind of roll on to, to other things. But that's those are two big things that I saw this week that I thought were uh, really exciting. Liz. Yeah. How are things in Olympia? Ah, uh, everything's rolling along here. Um, you know, the our governor said uh, this really vague statement of we're going to start to open things up soon. We're not going to um, continue with the lockdown. Uh, we're going to do roll this out really, really slowly, and that's about all that he said. And because of that, our phones are ringing. Everybody's like, okay, that's it. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to be cleaned again. So it uh, looks like uh, I, I, I'm a little worried that we're going to get that hit again, right? <laughs> Opening up too quick and moving too fast. But for right now, uh, people, are, people are optimistic for sure. People are ready to be optimistic. Yeah, I'm not going to go to a barber anytime soon, but, uh, you know, that that's not necessary for me. Tom and I were talking about haircuts a little bit and what, what to do. That's going to be a challenge, uh, getting your nails done. And I'm seeing a lot of roots when I see people's Facebook pictures. There's a lot of people that are going to be dying to get into the hairdressers and stuff like that. You know, hopefully, hopefully not actually dying, though. Like, we actually do take it slow and, and do those things uh, carefully. So, yeah, I see. I, I think I think. Washington's always been pretty pretty cautious along this route, though, as far as the process there. Hasn't it always been kind of uh, you, you guys kind of got ahead of things earlier? Or am I wrong to think that? Yeah, yeah we did. Uh, we were kind of pushed into it because we had that that big case up in Kent with the nursing home and all the deaths. So and that happened really early. That happened when people were still convinced the majority of the company country was still convinced that, oh, come on, it's not as bad as the flu. Do you know, know. That, that company owns a, a lot of nursing homes all over the country and they have one in St. Louis and it's had a really bad outbreak here. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't like tracked at all. I just was reading a St. Louis Post-Dispatch article and uh, that company owns uh, several nursing homes in St. Louis. And oh. one of them had a like one of our worst outbreaks with with significant numbers, like almost 10 percent of the state's deaths were out of this one nursing home. Um, so. Yeah, that's a tough business to be in right now. I would be, you know, anyway, that's just a, a, a thought on what you were saying is that, <laughs> that business is, is very challenging. So when I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking, you know, it seems like a huge challenge, right? We're all worried. We're all stressed out. How are we going to make things work? Blah, blah, blah. But that's my, my, my beacon right there. It's like, hey, we don't have anything like that going on. Everything mm -hmm. shining on our industry is good. It's like all all halos and rainbows and sunshine. We are part of the pollution, you know. Everything's great about us, but and some of these, some, you know, how would you like to be working, oh, working in or running a prison? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, mean, I, I try and I try and stay positive on that fact too. Is that we can provide a lot of social distance for our employees. Um, yeah. You know, we work. We've moved to a mostly single model. We still have some teams. There are team members that that don't own cars, and we have cars sitting outside that need to be used. We have some people just driving them on their own, which isn't necessarily the most efficient thing in the world. And a couple people that are non-drivers that we have to have in teams, but we're keeping those teams as the set teams. Um, again, so that's their biggest contact risk is, is their team members, you know, working together throughout the day. We're asking them both to wear masks, which, which you know, according to some data, if, if both employees are wearing masks while close, you know, while close together, that should help things. We're not putting up plastic dividers down the middle of the car. I have known a couple owners that have actually done that. So if anyone wants to chime in, I actually know a couple of people that have, I'm not naming names, because I think it's a great idea if you can afford to do it. It um, really isn't a bad idea. I was reading a study that uh, came out of China. I don't, I mean, the, the, the actual subject matter what, what was from China. It was a hospital. It was, it was this morning I, I was reading this and it showed that the uh, SARS uh, CoV 2 RNA actually aerosols. It actually will suspend in air for, for up to a couple of hours. And they got samples of it in this hospital, but they found the samples in confined spaces like, uh, like bathrooms, like toilet areas that are like three by three, four by four type space. They found it there. They didn't find it on the floors or open rooms or anything like that. So 
The good news is, you know, if it's not a really confined space, they couldn't find any of this aerosol, you know, RNA. The bad news is if you're riding in a car with somebody, that's kind of like being in a confined space with them. So, I mean, unless you really made those yeah. partitions, unless you made those partitions air sealed and a way, I think a good practice potentially could be that each side cracks their window so that any, any air on each side is being drawn out basically like maybe the back window. So like if you're both sitting in the front, you know, I, I don't know that you can avoid it though. It, it, best practice would be that you don't ride together for a period of time until we have, you know, you know, even lower case counts and things like that. But, um, you know, we're doing our best to, to keep that separate, but that's one area where I think we're, we're not quite a hundred percent where we'd like to be. Um, and we're just on our first week back. So we are, um, we did, we did resume service. Um, we got clarification that we, we've always been serving again, our businesses, uh, that are commercial businesses, especially apartment complexes where we're with commons, but we did decide to go back and serve customers that are essential employees. And we found that a lot of people wanted us back. I mean, I, I helped my wife clean the house this weekend and I want us back. I mean, I was, <laughs> I, was, I, was I was ready after I washed some baseboards this weekend. I was like, Oh man, this is, this, I need help. <laughs> we need to pay our people more money, right? Matt? <laughs> it's physically. Or, or, I consider myself in decent shape and it's, it's just, it uses some different muscles, man. It's, it's physically demanding work. It, it's challenging it work. Well, we should get to Matt's um, 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 conversation. You know, Matt Matt talks a lot, so we need some time to be able to get that info in. Yeah, yeah. we said that we would uh, take like a half hour for this if we needed it. So now's the time to go. You want to, uh, want to, want to take us there, Matt? Yeah, so I just shared my screen if you want to make that live real quick. I want to just show you... Uh, all right, so this is this is uh, the basis of what we're doing. We're, we're using Google Classroom quite a bit to uh, to teach with with our staff. So if you use Google Apps um, on the right hand side of your uh, browser, there's going to be like the little hamburger, the 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 nine little uh, dots there. If you scroll all the way down, you have uh, Google Apps as a built in um, as a built in app. They've got a whole bunch of stuff that I've never used before, and this was one of them that I never used before. Um, but what Google App, what Google Apps is is it's it's a it's a collection of apps that you run your email through um, your your business documents things like that um, and you could do this with a free Gmail account I think Google Classroom if you just set up Gmail if you're not running your business with it you could um, you could just get a Gmail account and have this so um, and once you set up Google Classroom. It's it's kind of like a social network for teaching. It's it's an it's an LMS, which is short for Learning Management System. And uh, I have never found a learning management system that I really like, and I don't really even really like this one that much. But it's a good place just to get started, and it's cheap. The price is right. It's free. A lot of learning management softwares are are very are very expensive. So you can um, you can basically put all the all the classes that you design into this so you can even you can even use YouTube videos and things like that that um, um, you can actually use YouTube videos and other things that you would create uh, or, or that you didn't even create that are that are relevant so we have one on hand washing which is um, one that I've seen Tom display too I think it's from um, what university one is that one Tom that you guys have I don't remember it's it's a uh, but again it's a pretty common one. We have this one on gloves and cross contamination. This one's interesting. It's um, let me see if it'll open. So it's this nurse that uses paint to demonstrate um, the proper use of gloves and, and, and avoiding cross contamination. You can find that on YouTube. And um, you know, I still have you know, I can see who's done the course and I can see who still needs to needs to do it. Um, you can set assignments and things like that. So you don't even have to create everything. So we we did some um, stuff that's COVID-19 specific. We have it in this things. Um, any staff update videos we're putting here. Internal processes, uh, things that are changing. We created a area for this. And then personal development, things that uh, we want them to work on um, while we're going through this. Uh, that would all be here. So this is a nice free way to organize all the learning and things like that you can do over this point. 
Uh, you add all your people in. You can just do that relatively easily. I don't remember exactly the process. Set your admins and who can deliver the uh, deliver the work. So let me. Let's see. Um, yeah, so that's that. So I also want to show some quick content creation methods. So Tom mentioned that. Um, let me show you something in PowerPoint. This is a really um, – I'm going to close this one because this one is related to uh, modern cleaning. But so um, so on all, on all your PowerPoint slide decks – you can, you can easily basically uh, turn them into videos, you know, just with a couple of steps. So let's say you make a presentation on how to clean a kitchen, okay? And this one this one is got all of our slides pre-built. And, you know, just a few, basically, uh, um, a few basic uh, slides, nothing crazy here. Um, what you would do is to make it a video, though, you would put animations in between. So like, um, or not animations, transitions, excuse me. You'd put transitions in between each slide so that it would act as if it is a, let me just, I'll expand my screen here so it fills up your guys, uh, fills up the video more. So you would, you would basically put a transition in between. So just pick, pick some kind of transition and um, pick the duration and then apply it to all of your slides, okay? And then basically when you play it, There'll be a transition, so it's not a, it's a nice smooth cut up, like a nice smooth cut between each one, so it's not choppy. And um, then you can do a couple things. You can record the slideshow, and this is how you could actually set it up as a video. So if I were to hit record slideshow, I, I would basically start talking, and I don't think you're going to see this part of my screen. So let me move this over to the other side. Um, let me see if it'll swap them because all you guys see is the big slide still. So hold on, let me um, let me see if I can switch screens. So unfortunately it wasn't showing you what, I, I, it, it opens up in a second screen where you, where, you're, where you can see the timings and you're recording each one. Um, so what happens now is, is if I were to play that, it's recorded on there. So let me just hit play and you can actually hear the should be able to hear the audio that we just recorded. Maybe not, but normally that's what I would expect. Uh, so you would you just record a slideshow, and then at that point, once you've recorded your audio on each slide, you can you can go ahead and uh, export it. And this is a really kind of cool feature. Just get go to export. And you can export it as an MP4, which is a video file. So you've actually created a really quick video uh, that you can send to your people. You can put on, you can put in your Google Classroom by uploading it to YouTube. So instead of picking PowerPoint procedure as the type of, uh, I'm sorry, as the type, you would, uh, where would I find the oh, file format as a MP4. So you can just, you can export it as, a, as an MP4. And you have basically at that point created a quick and easy video. And I'll just show you one that we did. And I'll just start one. Um, so we are in the process of uploading these to People Matter. So let's see. Um, let's see. Let's go to bathroom. I know we did bathroom cleaning MP4. So this one here is one that we just created. Bathroom cleaning procedures. Learning to clean a bathroom at Better Life Maids is one of the foundational cleaning procedures you will learn. After that, you'll collect the trash, pull all small rugs and towels left to right, top to bottom as you move. Use the appropriate tools on all surfaces. You're supplied a clean and disinfectant set of tools for each home. So that's one quick way to do, um, to get a quick video out there. Another thing that we just did today was this exact tool that Tom and I are using right now, this StreamYard. Um, you can actually use this to do presentations and record videos. And they have a free version that's gonna have a StreamYard logo in it, but for $20 a month, it's pretty good presentation software. Um, so let me just show you a quick example that, we, that I did with StreamYard and a slideshow. 
This this kind of requires you that maybe you might want to have a um, a two monitor setup would make things a little easier. So hi and welcome. This is Matt Ricketts, President and Chief Experience Officer. Sorry, I'm just going to skip forward. So we really want to be a very important part of things. So you kind of see it's just a slide. It's just a slideshow, and um, I'm just flipping through in a slideshow and recording in Vidyard as we go. So those are some kind of basic, really inexpensive tools you could do um, using PowerPoint to create uh, some some quick videos that you can add to your to your training library and get your people kind of trained up on all the new um, processes and procedures that you're rolling out and make sure that they are, you know, compliant with those. Um, and you can track that they've completed those. So that's that's really it on that. That's all I've really got. I tried to keep it brief and see if there's questions on, on some of that creation. We weren't planning on you keeping it brief, Matt. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember that ever happening before, Matt. Yeah. So. Uh, that kind of kind of confused me. Yeah. Uh, I, I do have a question though. So um, I actually have a, a couple of questions. So uh, why would one of the things you said was you are uploading this to People Matter, um, yeah. the bathroom training? Why would you be uploading your training, your bathroom training, to People Matter? Yeah. So we are putting it in the Google Drive too. But the People Matter is going to be for is what we're going to use for our new hire. So we're actually updating all of our. People Matter is another product that we use. I'm sorry, that is our um, applicant tracking system that actually brings them through to when we hire them. And so when they're hired, we're assigning all this stuff to training to our new hires. We do anticipate hiring quite a few people in the next year. Basically, um, I mean, May 11th, I'm, we're, we're looking to have some new hires start uh, in the next, I think May 12th and May 11th. I think is probably and, and if you go looking for it, I think they're branded themselves as Snag. Snag a job bought People Matter a Thomas. while ago. So it's yeah. like Snag. Is it Snag.com? I think so. I think if you if you look at Snag.com, um, it is. And again, I'm not saying it's the best applicant tracking system in the world. I'm always looking for something better. I've I've been trying to. I've been looking at a product called WeWork, but I can't get anybody to call me back. So that's not a good sign. It has a lot of features that I want. But the fact that I've left them like three messages and haven't heard back, I'm like, maybe I should just stick with People Matter until uh, until you know the immediate uh, the immediate crisis is over. Um, but the, there are a lot of other pro products out there. But People Matter is what we use to organize all of our training. And I, I I'm not going to dig into that. I was going to say I could just show you the back end of what that looks like from you know from an employee standpoint of what they see. But for new hires, our new hires are not going to go to Google Classroom. You could, however, enroll every new hire into Google Classroom. You could do that just as a manual process. Our process is, is we hire somebody it automatically assigns them all the courses they need to know. You could do that um, by, by hiring your people and assigning them to a class. Um, and you could, you could make a copy of that class and make it just unique to that person. So you could, there's a lot of things you could do with Google Classroom to deliver training if you wanted to and not pay for uh, an expensive kind of learning management system like People Matter or WeWork or there's a there's a ton. Uh, Trannual is one that I, I keep looking at that looks amazing. I just can't get over the cost because it's like um, I think it's like two dollars per employee or something like 70, that. Seventy bucks, seventy bucks for up to twenty five employees. Okay, and and so but the, yeah, so then it start you know so it starts to get a little bit, a little bit of a price break after that. But I'm like, man, I might hire, I might hire 15 people a month. So I might have 60 people a month on, you know, on the software. And then if we don't take them out, you know, we could end up with like 180 people in there because we don't take them out quick enough. And I'm getting billed like massive bills. So it would require us to like really, because of the turnover in, in, in our industry, I'm not convinced that I can manage that, you know, pay per seat license model and not just get some outrageous bill one, one month of like $5,000 because we just, you know, ended up. <laughs> You know, not. Yeah, I don't know that it would be that bad. Tran, Tranual, if you're on the call, I I love your product. I mean, I just that that's just a, a you know, I'm just trying to wrap my head around how to get through uh, using it and not having massive uh, use, usage bills. So it's a, so it's we a had a, a, we had a pr uh, presentation in our MMA group last week. I think it was last Friday on Trainual and it's part of their process to automatically kick people out when they're done with training. 
So that was one of the things that they showed us, which is awesome, right? They finished the training and now they're no longer in the, in the program. And email gets kicked out saying, hey, this person's done with training, pull them out so that you never get over that, that, that number. So that's like automation that. where, so it's automated. When they finish their last class, they're automatically booted out? No, an email gets sent out saying, pull them out. They're done with training. Uh, that's interesting. That's, that's interesting. However, we do a lot of ongoing training and we add new material and things like that. And I wouldn't yeah. want to put everyone back in. I, I like, man, I, I really like the demo I did of Trainual. I thought it looked like an amazing product. Sounds like you've, you've evaluated yeah. it as well. Um, what I like about it is, is it allows you to author content, sort of like what we did with the StreamYard uh, in a really clean fashion. Um, and they have a lot of great examples of how to use their use their product and really build and really build like a seamless experience for your employees. Um, yeah. Again, Google Classroom is not going to be as seamless as, as Trainual. It's it's a quick, easy, free way to kind of get affordable to though. It's cer certainly certainly the price was right, and I and it was available within the apps that I already had with with what I'm paying for uh, with what I'm paying for uh, Google Suite uh, every month. So I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't have to pay, you know, anything. For some reason, Google stock is going through the roof right now. I wonder what they're up to in all of this. That they're that they're somehow uh, Alphabet, the the parent company of Google, just just shot through the roof. Yeah, what what happened was their their paid advertising numbers are down. Yeah, but natural search and like YouTube in particular, their numbers are rocketing up. I think oh. YouTube has a lot to do with it. Not, not there. Uh, Got it. I was, I just was unclear. Like, what in the world? Why is there? What, what is it? Because I, I'm, I, I pulled all my, um, my, my pay per click ads. I, I increased my Facebook advertising budget because I want to still be engaging and, and you know, putting out content on Facebook and, and reaching you know potential customers. Even if we're shut down, I, I felt like that was cheap enough to do. Uh, I, I, you know, I lowered my budget from a couple thousand dollars a month to nine hundred initially. But I'm I'm back up to spending money on Facebook to get in front of people so that we're top of mind when this all kind of you know starts to unwind a little bit in the next few months. So um, that that was a uh, you know that was, I got a bill for 900 from them this week and that was like that was tough to swallow at first, but I was making money again, so it's not mm -hmm. it's not as bad. Yeah, <laughs> and Anyhow, you making you, money you makes everything better. And you can't use your PPP money to pay for advertising. No, I wish we could. Man, they really thought out a lot of things. I mean, they, they were smart by like by not letting you make capital expenses. Because I could imagine people going out and buying a bunch of worthless stuff with PPP money because they're like, oh, I got all this money, like making all these capital investments, which might be good for the economy and get things running. But ultimately, like they really did limit it down to like the bare necessities to keep your business running and, and keep your people paid. I think we all just have to remember the PPP is not about us. It's about keeping our people paid. If we if we frame it that way, then we can avoid misusing it and using it properly as best we can. It's to, to keep our people employed and um, and keep them off unemployment. However, however, whatever you think about the logic of that. Mm -hmm. um, but I like Tom's idea that it keeps them close to your company as well and keeps them engaged. Um, I think that's a, a very valid point as to what's going on with, with the PPP. And as long as One you're cleaning, things I thought was, go ahead, Tom. Well, as long as you're cleaning something, I mean, if you're generating revenue, it almost makes sense to bring in extra people to get up to the hundred percent. So it's all a grant. I mean, you can, you can, if you're not at a hundred percent, some of the monies are turned into grant, but only a percentage. And we don't even, we don't even know yet though. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I, I'm not sure of that. We all, we talked about this. I never saw, I never had any, I never had a document telling me how I, how I got forgiveness when I signed this loan. There was, there was no, there was no document telling you how to do that. And there's we no had document. no document. It just showed up one morning. It's like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, you didn't even sign. You didn't even sign for yours. They just said, Tom, here you go. Like, we trust you. <laughs> All right. You um, have so one of the things I did think was weird, though, about the PPP is I was reading over it again last night. And that one of the things that is forgiven is interest on other, on other stuff that you... Um, on other debt that you incurred before 
uh, March. Before. So I was like, yeah. well, that's interesting. Well, let's say you have so, a loan. Let's say you do have loans on cars. You can you can deduct the interest, but you what they're doing there is is they're looking at business interest as as a expense of the business um, that that needs to be that needs to be paid. But they're not giving you this money to pay down the debt. Basically, the principal, the principal. Yeah. Yeah, you can't yeah. pay the principal. Like if if you own your building and you're making a mortgage payment on your your your, your building, the interest would be could be part of the the forgiven part of the loan, but but not the principal. Because like what Matt said, and again, it's only up to twenty five percent. So yes. you know, right, that, there's that that piece on there too. Yeah, and there's no way know. there's no way you're going to get there. Yeah, I don't know if there's many companies out there that can use that twenty five percent though. I mean, we've run the numbers and we probably have as much overhead as anybody and. You know, we're not we're not going to come close to being able to use twenty five percent of that for overhead expense. I'm looking I'm looking at like three or four percent. I mean, like I you know, and it makes me feel good that I've run a lean operation. But I'm like, you know, I I and I don't want to mess with it, guys. Like I want <laughs> I hear people saying like all these things they're going to do, and I'm just like it makes me nervous. I'm like, okay, like I have tried to be a better listener and, and try and hear them out and not tell them they're wrong, but I. I, I, want to be, Good job, Matt. I want to be clear just that I believe that in this instance, I think you would be best served to be on the side of just being a little bit cautious. So um, it's not our money. It really is. I mean, just don't, don't think of it as your money. It's not your money. And then you will feel, then you will feel like as a better steward of this money, it, it, you know, it's the government's money still, and they will find a way to claw it back if you misuse it. So, um, yeah, like I've, I've heard some pretty interesting ideas from people and uh, I'm not going to get into specifics because I don't want to give anyone else any ideas. Yeah, we are being recorded and we're out in social media. And... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've heard some very interesting ideas from people and I don't want to give anyone else any like bad ideas from some of these things I've heard. And I, and I've just listened and I've said, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and I am not doing that thing because I believe in the end, you know, you know, some of you are going to do some things that are probably borderline, like, you know, and, and that's, that's the way that you manage risk and things like that. Um, but I think in the end, I think most of us are going to be good shepherds of this money, you're going to bring our people back, we're going to pay our bills, and we're going to get through this on the other side. And if you are generating revenue, like, like, you know, like Tom said, I mean, I look at it like this is that my operating account will get back up to about $100,000 by the end of this, if I don't have to spend money on payroll, and maybe a little higher. And that's about where I started because I, you know, I had about four weeks of payroll or three, well, three and a half weeks of payroll in the bank. I, I didn't quite have four. And uh, when this all started and I got down to like $10,000, I mean, I spent it all on payrolls and, you know, like I, I learned that maybe I have too generous of a PTO system as I'm paying two more weeks out of payroll after everybody's gone. And I'm like seeing my money just sort of dwindle because of that. Um but so I'm, I'm at least I'm actually getting back to whole to where I was. And that, but that's not the point of this either. It's not to make us whole either. It's to make sure that we can get back on our feet and, and again, keep our, our people employed and close to our company. So, you know, some of us, some people are going to make out pretty well from this, especially if they're doing close to their, you know, their original revenue. Um, I'm doing like 35 percent only because we're only willing to serve essential employees for the next week or two. And then as we kind of spool back up and take on more customers, we might see that number get to 50%, 60%. I mean, I'm hoping to grow that 35%, you know, whatever the number is, it's about $18,000 a week for us. But if we can grow that 10% a week and get it to 20,000 next week and 20, 22 and a quarter the next, and just kind of basically looking for some compound interest on that growth to get us back at the end of seven weeks, if I could be at 80% again, that would be, that would be the goal. Uh, hey, we have a, let's see, a request. Denise said that she would love to see um, what you're doing for your Facebook advertising. If you had uh, time someday, Matt, to yeah. maybe walk us through how you're, how you're doing that. Mm -hmm. I, I, would have to, I would have to defer just to be totally honest is that I used to do a lot of that myself and, and do all the design and everything else. Um, you know, as we all get busier, even though that's something that I think I'm pretty good at, I actually have an agency, but I'm certainly happy to show you some examples of the ads that we have running and, um, and you know, give you a general idea on the targeting we're running. 
And what I will tell you is one of the biggest things we do is we upload our email list of our current customers into Facebook and create a lookalike list of about 50,000 people that we target based on the um, attributes of our uh, of our current customers. That's a, just a quick tip. Um, and then we, we use that as a secondary list. So um, we have three or four lists, but like, you know, one of our lists is our current customers. One of our lists is every email that we've ever, ever gotten from people um, or, or any lead we've generated and made central, we export those. And, and, but the very best performing thing that we do um, is, is marketing to a lookalike list of our current customers. Um, that, that helps. Um, and then, you know, targeting, we're also targeting commercial spaces right now. Um, I, I, I don't know if I just, just closed on a uh, on a commercial apartment building commons this week, and um, I have to look back and see if it was our initial cold calls that got that lead, or if it was the Facebook advertising, or if it was a referral. But I, it's all kind of blending together right now because we're working that angle pretty hard. All righty. Anybody any have questions? anything else going on? Guess it wasn't as a hot topic on training. No. <laughs> Uh, questions no i think i think uh being able to put together a powerpoint deck and narrate it is an awesome way to do you know just do it yourself training it's uh you know with all of our means to do that yeah it's it's a lot quicker than going out and trying to shoot professional video and then cutting it together and, and doing it it's just i mean you could get you could get done with a video that's 10 minutes and you can do it in one 10 minute take instead of you know, the initial prep work, shot list. I mean, there's a lot that goes into a professional video. And I think we all realize that when we try and hire a professional videographer with what they want to charge us. So um, yeah. I know Sharon Timberg's been on some of these calls and she could probably testify to the fact that she spent uh, probably 10 years ago or 15 years ago, she built like a really great program um, and spent a lot of money, you know, putting together in Spanish and English, um, a really great program. And I like choked, we, we were having a, just a conversation and I'm not going to say the number because she can speak to herself, but I choked at one point when I heard what she spent on that. I was like, holy cow, but I get it. I totally get it now. Um, now that I know really more about the cost of that, because I was like a new business at the time. I think we were like maybe a couple of years in and, and Sharon was giving us some advice on something and I was, you know, talking to her about training and, and uh, that was, her advice was that, you know, you know, do it yourself. Otherwise you're going to spend X, Y, Z. And, and the number was astronomical. I was like, Oh my God. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sarah wants to know, uh, Matt, does she create the lookalike list in Facebook? Yeah, there should be a, so there should be in, in your Facebook marketing. Um, so just remember there's a couple different levels of Facebook marketing. Um, but if you go into your, um, if you go to manage pages here versus managing pages, so there's, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not sharing my screen. Um, let hey, me, you can do that, but Hey, Matt, don't agencies, which you, which a certain scale, don't agencies have access to some functionality in Facebook that most of us don't have. Yeah, they have, they have, there's, there's three levels of Facebook advertising, maybe even four levels of advertising. There's, there's just promoted, there's promoted posts, which is kind of like the first level of advertising, which is just like very generic Facebook targeting, which is super easy to do, um, you know, relatively, and they've, they've made it super simple for the average person just to go in there and do like a promoted post. Uh, the next level would be, um, would be doing some, some stuff in the back end of Facebook using the, the Facebook um, business manager tools. And, you know, you can create more targeted lists on there. It used to be you could it used to be you could get a lot more information, uh, but then Facebook had all those issues with uh, the elections three and a half years ago. <laughs> so um, yeah, so so they really cracked down on what data people could uh, get a hold of out of Facebook, and they limited it down um, to businesses that that they had a lot of trust with and, and deeper integrations, and those businesses have what's called API access to Facebook's data. And they can do some pretty crazy stuff. So I give my agency my phone list of my current customers, uh, and and I and and they have access to my phone system. And so every call that comes in, they're matching it against an ad, and they're seeing if some of the phone activity that we're having is related to Facebook activity. And they can they can match phone numbers to a, to a pretty high degree, especially cell phones, to Facebook users. 
And it's only about an 80% match rate, but that's still pretty good. And uh, so they can see if a cell phone user, you know, someone calls in and they just saw an ad within a day, they can actually even see the timing. Now, they won't tell us who it was or we can't match it exactly to the sale, but they can even match, they will tell us whether it became a sale um, based on our sales list that we upload to Facebook's API. And they will match it and they will tell us how much, you know, based on, you know, some historical data that we've put in on what a sale is worth and things like that, um, what our, what our, revenue producing activity was with Facebook. It's actually pretty astonishing when you when you do have that level of access, um, and I don't have it, again, my agency does. Um, I'm happy with the amount of money I'm spending when I'm seeing the ROI and I'm seeing, you know, okay, you generated, you know, 65 phone calls off of Facebook. Um, you know, that that's significant. I mean, we're, we're spending a good amount of money, but not six, not just 65 phone calls, but like all of the leads that are generated, I can even look at what pages were visited on our on our uh, website, you know, um, based on, um, you know, based on uh, what I'm looking for them to do is go to our book now page and get a quote. Um, you know, that's that's really important to us to kind of determine how far that how, how far they clicked into the website and, and assign value. And then the other thing you have is, is if you're doing it right with Facebook, uh, there's something called pixel tracking. So I'm moving away from trying to even collect emails on my on my website. So I'm in the middle of doing a. This is another thing, guys. I'm actually investing like fifteen thousand right now on a new website build. And that number, some of you guys are like, I've only spent three thousand on a website. It's kind of as big as my website is at this point, and all the you know all the things that are going into it. Um, fifteen thousand. It's a big number, but you don't need to spend that. That's just where we're at with what we've done to to get you know what we need to have done. But but I'm making a huge investment right now. It's a great time to redo your website, and uh, I'm looking at changing my lead strategy. But going back to this, the the pixel tracking is is a big thing. Is because if if they go to your website, they they can be shown Facebook ads on Facebook for up to 180 days. But Facebook also has a huge um, a huge presence on all kinds of other websites where they can show your ads on ESPN, on um, really pretty much every news every news uh, page. So Google and Google and Facebook both have uh, advertising networks, and a lot of the same pages actually have have places on each page where they're showing both um, both ad feeds from either Google from either Google Pixel uh, properties or Facebook properties. I have picked Facebook over Google for my pixel advertising um, just because I know that so many people use Facebook and, um, you know, uh, and I know that I know how targeted it is uh, when I'm trying to show ads to, a, a, you know, additional audience based on people that have, that have been on my site. So, um, you know, that's that's a personal choice, but you can use pixel tracking from Google um, or Facebook. Hey Matt, can you share how these ads um, charge? Like, what what would one of these um, and I said ad and agencies? Yeah. What, how, how do they charge? What do they charge? How does that work? Uh, it can be it can be a variety of prices. So if you if you get in early with an agency, um, you know somebody that you think has some potential to like really learn and grow, you might get somebody good managing your Facebook for five hundred bucks. I mean, I don't know that that's that cheap anymore. Um, I spend about 2000 a month. I think it's actually 2050 a month with them just for the uh, creation of ads, um, you know, management of my account and uh, analytics and some other other things. But that also includes up to three video shoots per year. Um, we originally had it set up that I actually got one video shoot per month. I actually found that to be like overwhelming for them to come out and do a video shoot every month, like for me to prepare for that. So we moved it down to three video shoots, but where we would produce three to four videos per shoot instead. And um, that includes that. Includes, oh, that yeah, it includes two, two photo shoots a year, which I'm like way behind on. Um, we just canceled one in, um, we canceled ours in April, obviously. We had a new photo shoot in April. We were going to, we were going to shoot with a lot of the new training procedures, like um, you know, PP, you know, I was hoping that there would be some restrictions lifted, but we decided to kind of push that off until, um, until late May. I mean, just really everything we do needs to show. I've got people cleaning bathrooms without gloves on in some of my old pictures. I'm like, that doesn't fly anymore. Like I, shaking I, I, hands with the customer. 
Yeah. Oh no, we have videos like we have video trainings where we're like, yes, when you get to a customer's house, warmly greet the customer by shaking their hand. And now it's going to be like greet the customer with a with a uh, <laughs> bow. Um, I love that. <laughs> you know, it's got it's all got to change. I mean, every, man, we had um, we had eighty six uh, video trainings in our library, and we went through it, and like there was only like twenty four that were relevant anymore after COVID nineteen. We like literally had to inactivate a ton of our trainings because like we're like, well, that isn't a good idea anymore, and that's not a good idea anymore, and we really shouldn't do that anymore. I mean, we, we went through, it was awful. Like we were like, all right, well, like so much of our content is irrelevant anymore. So um, yeah, and I, and I don't know, I, I guess maybe a lot of you guys are feeling the same way or maybe I'm the only one that's like that paranoid of, of having pictures of, of employees not wearing gloves now. I'm like, I don't know. I think our customers want to see gloves. They want to see masks where appropriate. They want to see, um, me and Tom had a conversation about shoe covers and shoe covers are a double-edged sword, but I think that they're important um, we, ha we, I've been asking my employees every day if they've had any issues with them. We haven't had any, any issues, but I know that they can be a slip and fall risk. And we've, we've talked about that. So, you know, we, you need to train your people on, on shoe covers and using them properly. And if they are concerned about the surface, that it might be better to just clean the, the sole of their shoes than to wear shoe covers on some surfaces. And I don't know if Tom, you want to elaborate on any of that? Or, or... Yeah, we had a slip and fall instance in one of our, our, our branches. It wasn't serious, but it was attributed to shoe covers. And, um, we believe they're necessary. Uh, we, we believe, I mean, there's, there's studies that show that the virus can live on floors for, for a good period of time. And the last thing we'd want to do is track uh, virus around or just soil even from, from one home to another. So we uh, don shoe covers before we go into a home and we remove them as soon as we leave the home. Um, we were debating about, you know, if you had any any pathogens on your shoes with just the whole mechanics of like walking on the sidewalk driveway whatever would that mitigate that risk and i guess it depends where you are at you know if you're in a multi-family uh apartment building and you're going across the hall you know probably not um if you're walking i mean i don't know i just i don't know if there's any empirical evidence that suggests how many steps you have to take on what surfaces before you would uh stomp out the germs, if you will. So we're, we're all in on shoe covers. Yeah, I think shoe covers are a good idea for the moment. I, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I, I was the one that was kind of saying like, wouldn't you think walking, the friction of walking would just kill the virus pretty quickly. But I mean, you know, you made the point of like, you don't know, like you're just making some assumptions, Matt, like that doesn't necessarily, that doesn't necessarily give the people the comfort that they want right now. Like, you know, you're making an assumption that that might happen, but we just don't know. So uh, in, in the absence of good information, you know, I I personally believe that we're going to find out that this virus is probably killed by a lot more products than these EPA certified disinfectants that we're all using right now. We don't need to use as nasty of disinfectants. But in the absence of good data, we all should be using disinfectants right now as a final step on on high touch areas if the customers so so desire that. Um, and maybe even if they don't, like we actually at a, at a period there, we weren't making it, we, we were making it non-optional and we're thinking about removing it as, as an optional uh, or making an optional extra step instead of being something we're requiring, we're requiring right now. Um, you know, maybe you have some thoughts on that. If it's, if you think, think that's something to, to cover. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I think that it's over, overkill in a lot of regards. And I mean, this kind of goes back to the whole modern cleaning, uh, philosophy that oftentimes we're we're overusing you know chemicals especially disinfectants in a residential setting but we haven't used the term unprecedented event so we'll go ahead and we'll get that ob obligatory uh you know statement out of there in this time of this unprecedented event we need to err on the side of caution you know and, and an abundance of caution so if the epa says use these disinfectants i think that we need to select from their list yeah. Again, part of it is, is is the psychological part of making everybody comfortable that, that, that we're doing it by the rules and doing everything we reasonably can. So, so we're kind of, we, we, we're pushing up on ahead, this. Matt. I was just saying, we're pushing up this on this hour. Do we want to just talk about the training that we're all working on? Well, you, you guys can start getting that pulled up. Let me get to some of these questions we have over here. Okay. Um, so Sarah wants to know, Matt, as far as Facebook ad agency, um, what would she maybe be searching for? Like, would she just search for Facebook?
Facebook ad agency or you have any ideas there? Yeah, just like Facebook marketing, Facebook marketers locally, like try and see if there's anybody out there local that's that's, you know, kind of that's kind of up and coming. I mean, there's going to be an agency for every price range. I mean, there's going to be big, expensive agencies in your town and then there's going to be, um, you know, some smart kid that's learning this thing. Um, there is a guy called Billy Jean is marketing or Billy Jean marketing. I can't remember what it is. He um, he teaches other marketers a system. And I would maybe look for people that uh, maybe I don't know if he has a certification on his things, um, but I, I've bought some of his courses before. And actually, his his teaching is really effective. If you wanted to like learn how to do it yourself, um, Billy Jean Marketing. Um, I mean, very cocky, arrogant guy, but I mean, in the Facebook world, that probably you know, it helps it helps sell. Um, you know, but uh, he could rub some of you the wrong way. I'm I'm sure. But he, uh, he does have some good informational products out there. You could learn it yourself. And I think he teaches studios uh, a lot of his stuff. And I would maybe look for agencies that are kind of up and coming that might use some of his, uh, his, some of his ideas. Uh, he does some smart stuff. So that might be one thing to look at. Would these, would, Matt, would these agencies be doing your, your SEO work, your on-page and your off-page SEO work as well? I would look for somebody that's just Facebook marketing specific. I would I would want somebody that's just really good at Facebook marketing. It's it gets somebody else to do the SEO. They're Here. different. They're if, different skills. I'm sorry. They're different skills. I mean, they're yeah. different. They're totally different skills. We'll talk if, SEO another day as well. But it just got me thinking. If you're looking for an SEO agency, would you hire anybody that didn't rank on the first page? <laughs> that's a tough question because because I, I know a guy that's amazing at SEO that I don't know that his he didn't even have a web a website a few years ago, and I know he was one of the best in St. Louis. He actually does like uh, he does a lot of the big ambulance chaser stuff in town and ranks these big, big, big companies. And uh, his website was terrible. And then I finally kind of was joking with him. I was like, Chris, like you are like the SEO master, and you have the most dog poop website I've ever seen. And then he basically, I know he didn't do it just because of me, but like a couple months later, he's like, Hey Matt, check out our new website, and it was awesome. And I was like, well, now you got to get it on first page. He's like, that's impossible for SEO. Like to get first page for SEO, like, you know, maybe for St. Louis, maybe SEO agency, St. Louis, we could do that. But like if someone's searching for SEO expert or something like that, he's like, there's no way to rank for that. Like that's, a, that's, that's not even a, a, like a possibility. Dog poop. That is horrible. It was a bad, it was a bad website for a guy that, for a guy that's as good as web stuff as he is, he's not about web design. He's so again, Web design, you know, there's all these different skills and we all think that these people that do web stuff should be good at like all this stuff. But like, you know, web design, user experience, uh, SEO, um, you know, uh, conversion strategies. These are all different things. And so maybe an agency has like like one person that can be really good at these things. Uh, and that's why it's hard for us as business owners to be good at these things, because they're not even a skill that one person can be good at, you know, uh, and, and do them all for you legitimately. I don't believe most most web marketers are going to be probably mediocre at all of these things and maybe good at one of them. And they, you know, what if you really want a better outcome, you'd be better to find someone that's good at Facebook marketing. And they might even there's there's four or five skills within Facebook marketing, which is like copywriting, creating imagery, analytics. I mean, there is, you know, research and analytics, just finding the right target. Like that's a whole skill in itself. And then and then interpreting the data. And that's probably a different person than the person that's good at writing copy. And that's a different person that's probably good at creating images. So unfortunately, there aren't that many like one person shops that are good at all of that stuff. Now, there are one person shops that actually know how to outsource that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they, they hire the right people and, and do those things. But um, they're different skills. I mean, you know, we all have different skills and, and none of us can be good at all of these things. <laughs> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on here. Dusty, um, I'm not exactly sure what you're asking here. What about residential house cleaning professional services? Love up, mask up, Google, not Google, how about goggles, shoe covers, commercial grade disinfectant, social distancing while cleaning as a question mark. Um, gray area under safety and sanitation. Are you asking about training, how to create training around these things? I'm not sure. Or maybe give a little yeah, bit more clarity. Asking whether, they're, yeah, asking whether they're essential. There's a couple things there. So, yeah, there's there's a few things. So we're, we're kind of getting up close to the hour. Let me get some of our obligatory stuff out of the way. There are a lot of people asking about the uh, professional uh, house cleaner program. 
And we actually have it on the Modern Cleaning website now. We have both programs. The COVID-19 training is here. If you click on that, it will bring us here. And this was the page that was actually on the homepage yesterday. And you got two ways to enroll in that. You can pay $39 and take the class immediately as a student. Or if you have a company, you can click on buy uh, courses now and you can get uh, bulk discounts and basically you just take your list of, of employees you want to train and you upload it. And if you've got a bunch of people to train, it's cheaper to do it that way. Over here, this is this is new, where you click on this link and it's the professional um, house cleaner program. And it brings you to this page and the graphics aren't overwhelming at the moment. We just wanted to whip this together because people are wanting to know how they could enroll in it. So these are the seven classes that we're doing. The first class on what is professional house cleaning, the role of a professional house cleaner. It's going to be published a week from today at 12 o'clock Eastern. Um, if you want to sign up for all seven classes, the other six classes will be published throughout the month of May. So by the end of the May, all seven classes will be available. Um, there's bulk discounting available up to 50%, depending upon how many seats you buy. You can do per class at $29. The uh, exam at the end for the certification is free. We're doing a 50% discount off of these prices, even the bulk prices, between now and May 6. You see this pre-order code here? It's a pre-order. That's the uh, secret code to do that. This says the class will be live. The class is going to be recorded, but it'll be available that you can log in and take it at, at, at 12 o'clock next Wednesday and then balance next Wednesday. So what you do is you click on this enroll now. It'll bring you here. You click on the add coupon. You take the magic code that was over here and you add that. And this is relatively new. I hope it works. And if I go down here and start entering my credit card, it will actually charge you half of that. So I don't know, what's that, $49.50? If you enter the credit card, it will, it will reduce that in half. Yeah, I think it's... I mean, I think it just kind of segues like all this training talk, training talk we're doing today. Um, this is going to be something that uh, we basically want. I, I want all of my people certified on when they start moving forward. I think this is a this is a program kind of long overdue. Like we've been talking about it for a while, but I, I'm I'm really excited about being able to offer this to my techs. It's a much broader course than just the COVID training. I mean, this is wow. It's not prescriptive. I mean, we're not getting into use this product and use you know, these tools exactly. It's it, it can apply. You know, I make it analogous to to like a driver's ed manual, and you need to have a driver's ed manual regardless of what city or what you know country you drive. You know, where, where you drive or what car you drive. You all need to have the driver's ed course. This is the drive analogous to the driver's ed course. For a professional house cleaner, and a lot of this is really what makes the difference between you know just anybody going out there cleaning a house, but somebody going out there cleaning homes where they understand the why behind what they're doing, and in doing it with with a greater purpose, and doing it with uh, you know at a higher level because they have a deeper understanding of, of of what they're doing and the reasons they're doing it. All right, we have some questions here, Tom. Um, Heather, does this include the class that was given a few weeks ago? No, it doesn't. The class from a few weeks ago is back a page. You can still find that. Uh, but that is specific to COVID-19. And this course here is a house clean, a professional house cleaning course. So this is uh, for people that are going to be cleaning, your house cleaning technicians, for them to be able to know all of the basic stuff that you need to know to be able to be a professional house cleaner. And so uh, just to reference okay. So just to reference it, just imagine that, that, that this is the HCT manual boiled down. If, if some of you have taken HCT, you realize that that's a very technical book and there's a lot of information there that's maybe not necessarily great for technicians because they would just 
just it, it doesn't apply to what they need to use every day. So Janice, who is incredibly like, you know, you know, like, in, 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 you know, just knows this cleaning stuff left and right. You know, Tom basically asked her like, hey, turn this into something that we can actually put out to to technicians that they can learn so that they know not just like, you know, processes and procedures and, and what to do, but also why that they're doing it. So it gets into the science and some of the tech. It gets into the equipment on how things work a little bit so they understand. I mean, just imagine if your techs understood how to fix a vacuum just because they understood that or, or you know, the science behind cleaning a little bit so they don't damage a surface. It, it's, it's a lot of that, but it's boiled down in a way that is accessible uh, for the technician. And, um, you know, this is the first pass and it's going to keep getting better and better. Uh, but, you know, we're going to get it out there. You know, I'm going to help with some of the segments. I know, um, you know, I have a small little bit of knowledge that I can 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 apply. But there's some there's some really great information in that book, but it just needs to be distilled in a little bit different way. We're going to have several presenters that are going to be doing this. Um, we it's good, Seven classes in the program and we're saying it's going to be about seven hours. We're looking at it now and some of the classes are going to go longer than seven hours, but it's not going to be live. So you can ingest what you can ingest and come back and pick it up later. So it's kind of like go at your own pace. Once you've signed up, I mean, you've got the class for forever. Um, let's see. We, I got a question here. Robin wants to know, can you buy a package of courses and sign the cleaners at a later date? Yes. Yes, you can. If you want to want to buy enough seats to cover your cleaners that you haven't even hired yet and to, to you know, give you some cushion for, for, for turnover, you know, throughout the year. Yeah. You, you can do that. The rules, the rules are that whatever package you buy, that those seats are good for 90 days. So don't think like I'm going to buy these and use them, you know, a year from now, you have to use them within 90 days, but they're, but they're good for, 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 for 90 days. So Heather, that answers your question, 90 days. And then Amelia, is $50 each person to take the course and be certified? Yes, the certification is, um, there's no additional charge for that. And and, and that's actually a big um, benefit. Ah, okay, let's see. Um, we have one more. Um, if somebody already took the HCT training, would they want to take this time? Um. Maybe, um, you know, it's going to be covering a lot of the same material. There's some 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 new new material here, but there's there's probably more duplication than there is unique material. This is designed to make it a lot more accessible for your cleaning professionals, for the, for the people. If you, if you're here as a as a business owner or managing a, a house cleaning business, the, the the primary purpose behind this is to make it easy for the people that are cleaning the homes for you to access this because you know they don't have to travel the price point is way lower there's no you know additional fee for a test there's no uh, membership to you know an additional association so it's just cheaper and easier to access and and um that's the primary purpose if you've never taken hct as a business owner i think this would be an awesome awesome thing for you to do if you've just taken hct you're probably, you're probably going to see a lot of things here that 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 you already know. Uh, so Susan's asking a question here, Tom. How would she show this course to her staff? Do they all watch it separately? Is there one login? Do they have to be in one room? Is it on Zoom? How does it work? Um, it, well, it depends how you do it. I mean, if you you've got you can have one login and go through the training material and have everybody watch it. You would only have one uh, certification exam. So only one person could, could could get their certificate, but um, more you know if you want to have you know throw it up on a wall and have multiple people watch it all at the same time, that certainly certainly is doable and have discussion. You would only have one certification though. All right, I'm answering some of these in group because I know we're getting short on time. Will you have logos for the website? Not sure what that means. I think there will be. There's this going to be a sort of a modern cleaning certified logo that that Tom has uh, talked about building, and we need to probably get that uh, get that designer hired to get that done this week. Wouldn't you think? We're working on it. Yeah, and and Marsha, I, I agree with you. If you've already taken the HCT course, 
for, for, for me and my business, absolutely, I'm going to take this as well. Um, I might sit down with an employee and watch it with them, and then I pay one time, they get the certificate. But you absolutely need to know what your people are, are learning, you guys. You need to be able to back it up and understand it and and be able to add your own twist onto everything that you hear. Um, also, one more thing I want to point out, a lot of times uh, when we're giving this training, we just sort of give it to our people flat. Don't, don't just give it to them and walk away from it. Continue um, talking about this information. Pass it on. Talk about it a lot. You're, you're learning about the why, and one of the reasons why that's so important is Remember, there's three basic things that your employees need to feel engaged. They need to feel like they matter. They need to feel like there's meaning in the work that they do. And there needs to be some kind of a clear measurement. This program is all three of those things, you guys. So this one program all by itself can help to engage your employees in such a big way than, than any of these other things that you hear all the time, like cook them breakfast doesn't hold a candle. In this program, um, giving giving them a spin of the wheel, not even a candle to this. Cook them breakfast, let them spin the wheel, give them a gift card for their for their good ratings. All of those things together are not as impactful as this one program when it comes to engagement. So don't forget that you're looking for more from a training program than just giving them knowledge, and and this program gives you that. It's a lot more. This is the yeah. This is the why behind what you're doing, and that's a that's a really really good good point, Liz. That you, you there obviously is overlap with 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 HCT, but this is presented in a different way. A lot of the examples are are, are, are unique, and you got a different set of people. You're going to have you know several people that's going to be presenting. You know, the three of us are going to be presenting. You know, parts of this. We're going to have some other people helping us with it as well. And you want to be able to you want to be able to share it with your with your staff. You want to share it with your cleaning professionals and be able to, you know, talk about the things that you saw together. It's uh, you know like watching a movie together, and it's an, and it's an experience that you can can talk about and 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 share in the days, in weeks, in months, and even years after after doing the program. I, I'm assuming, Tom, that. We, well, I know you haven't. We haven't talked about this at all yet. But I'm assuming that in a year or so, there's going to be a new iteration that's going to have updated what's new, etc. Because that was one of the things we were talking about with the HCT program. Is it's just the same program every year, but there's a lot of new stuff happening. Yeah, so, it's going to be it's going to be what we call an iterative process. We're we're constantly going to be going to be updating it, making revisions, and. Um, I mean, quite honestly, I mean, this is a project that has been in the works for a long time. And if you ever had one of those projects that you got, you know, about 70% of it done and something happened and you just kind of got distracted and the other 30%, you just, you just never quite finished it. This is one of those. And when COVID-19 popped up, it was like, holy cow, you know, we really need to buckle down and, and, and finish this and, 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 and produce it and make it available. So that's, that's what we're doing. But, but we're going to be swinging around and spending more time on, on, you know, getting, you know, the production quality of, of, of this will, will, will get better as, as time and time goes on. Alrighty. Um, three, it's three eleven, So we're running a little bit late. We've got an hour and seven. Um, just real quick answers to a couple of questions that we had earlier. Um, just, if you could just keep this up, Tom, um, because I'm sure some more questions are going to pop up. Uh, as you guys think of more questions, feel free to post them here. I'll answer just a quick couple of the older questions. Can we have lifetime access to the course even once finished it? This way we can rehash if need be. Sounds like it's a 90-day access, um, Heather, not lifetime. Um, what is the package price for seven employees for the whole program? Would it be three forty-six fifty, Tom, uh, with the discount? I'm doing this from memory. I think it's a 15% discount. So it would be 15% off of 99 and then it would be half of that with the pre-order code. I have to use a calculator okay. for that. So you're 15% off first, not off of the 50%. Well, you, can do the other way. You, you get the same number either way. You can take the 99 divided by two and then take 15% off of that. It's all right, so you have 346.50, take 15% off of that, Susan. 
and that's that'll be your number. Um, yeah, Bridget, ordering ASAP. Yeah, I, I had a feeling you were going to be one of those people <laughs> that was going to be on it. <laughs> you know, there's certain people that are on this call that I, I already know. I just can't wait to go in and see who pre-orders and see how many of you guys that I'm already expecting are on my list. Actually, I, I'm sure Tom and I are going to make some sort of a bet, as we usually do about this kind of stuff, uh, about these types of things, how, uh, how many people we think are going to be on there and who. Uh, uh, so, some quick answers to those other questions. You guys um, go ahead and keep answer, asking any questions that you might have about the program. Um, uh, shoe covers. Yes, washable shoe covers are great. Um, and and rewash them and you can use them again. Just be careful of that non skid portion of the shoe cover that it doesn't wear out. Um, there was another question. Let's see if I can find it. I don't think it was anything horribly important. Oh, um, you guys are talking about um, finding uh, face masks and gloves and stuff. I'm going to leave that one to you guys. Go ahead and continue to post. Anybody that has connections, please post them. Um, I heard somebody say, or I read that somebody was saying your local pharmacy is a good place to go. Costco keeps getting more in. Uh, a lot of places to get face masks online that you can order them now for like five bucks a piece. You can even get them with your logo on them. We ordered a bunch of those. They're pretty yeah. nice. Uh, I, I no, swear, face, face masks are, I'm going to grab an example of we had something sewed locally too. Real quick. So um, I am going to um, just remind you guys about this date. Last time that we did the COVID program, there was some frustration from people. They're like, oh, I only did one, one section of it. I didn't get both sections done. It, it was free and now it's $39.50. So I'm going to remind you guys that to get this 50% off pre-order amount, you have to pay by when, Tom? Wednesday. At what time, Tom? Hmm. I'm not okay. even sure. I need to check. My daughter is handling the back end of all of this. And we Let's said Wednesday. And she said Wednesday. Yeah. Um, I, so we're going to go with you guys. Do it by the end of Tuesday. Well, why wait? Why wait have... for Wednesday? You know, I would, if, you, if, if, if this is something that, that, that you're interested in, you intend to do, you might as well do it now so you don't have to worry about forgetting about it. Yes, but if you're waiting on your your idol or you're you're waiting for whatever reason, don't wait past Tuesday because I don't know that it's not going to happen midnight Wednesday morning. Okay, so Tuesday, Wednesday at some point in time it might go up. So if you want that fifty percent off, and um, please tell me that you want that. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Those are really cute. I like those. Yeah, I like I like them too. It's kind of pulling on my ears. I've got big ears, so I, it's you know, kind of grabbing. Yeah, well, they're probably not made for men as much as for your your gals. No, but, but they, they're very nice. About about five dollars plus uh, about fifty cents of material. So um, yeah, so you can you can have them made locally too if you're if you're struggling to find uh, some supplies. We had about. Uh, we got we ordered eight yards of material from Joanne and um, and then like each yard produces like I want to say like twenty masks something like that like oh, wow. yeah it's, it's at least fifteen. Appreciate you showing us that Matt because we take these videos we push them to YouTube and you yeah. just gave me the thumbnail for this. Uh, <laughs> <video>. <laughs> nice, but you know anybody that has seen Matt branding knows that that mask is. Perfect for his branding. Uh, I I thought better life made as soon as I saw it on him. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome, Bridget. Good. Go get get signed up and look forward to uh, uh, presenting all of this stuff to you starting next week. All right. Anything yeah. else, y'all? We'll be here tomorrow at five o'clock Eastern, same time. I posted when I when I posted this uh, this uh, Facebook Live. I made sure I put Eastern time on it today. So I hope that that worked out for everybody. So <laughs> you good? Have an option. 
for those of you that were hoping he would put like Pacific and Central and Mountain, he only has the option when he's signing up to give one time zone and he's in the Eastern time zone. So that's what he uses. Cool. It's a good exercise for our minds to do the conversion. It, it, it keeps us sharp. Karen, so we good? All righty. Yep, we're good. Have a nice thank night. Oh, thanks, Heather. You have a nice night as well. Thank you so much. We much appreciate you uh, being a part of, of what we're doing here. And, and truly, this is awesome. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 5. Thank you, Matt. Bye-bye. Bye. See ya.